Hi, I'm John from Unix Surplus. And a long time ago, I was told to never underestimate the bandwidth of a bunch of data tapes driving down the freeway in a station wagon. Well, things have changed now. We don't have data tapes anymore, and we don't drive station wagons. But I still can fit my 96 terabytes in a blue box and put it in the back of my F-150 and drive it to the data center. So, we've done a lot of different custom solutions for our customers. Sometimes we've done just drives in a box with custom cut foam. And they can do it either in a road case or a Pelican case. This particular unit right here is going to be running Unraid, which is a very popular software game, in a nice disk array already set up and ready to go for the customer. Everything the customer needs is inside. All the drives, built in array, ready to go. Just pop off the front and back of your hard key. It's all shock mounted. You've got your keyboard, your mouse, your power cord, Ethernet switch, everything the customer needs to plug this thing and get it back up and running. This is the ultimate in off site data emergency recovery. So we powered our array on right now. And you see that you're going to take about 18 to 20 watts just for the lights out management. And that's powered up. Let's turn on our servers here, our disk array, and we'll see that our power will go up to about 600 watts maximum. Typically, nominal is around 450 to 500 watts when you're powering it up. Right now, here we're at about uh, 595 peak, and we're going to be about 400 watts after power up and spin up of the disk drives. Now let's power our unit on and take a look at the Unraid software that this customer requested for us to run. So let's take a look at our Unraid software right now. We can boot Vemtest to test the computer, or it has Unraid OS, which is me booting off this USB key on the drive right here, which is a software-based rig. We can move this USB key into the drive. We just have it out there to show you what needs to happen. So this is a Linux-based image that we're booting off of, and it can run small comp clients. It's a really tiny little version of an embedded Linux fan, uh, kernel to do NAS and network attached storage. The nice thing about Unraid is it doesn't treat drives as a RAID volume or a mass drive. How it looks for the drives as a Linux-mounted file system drive, and it creates a RAID file on those Linux drives. So it has a lot more support for different types of uh, disk arrays, and it's a lot more tolerant too, and you can support power down of drives or low power settings, etc. So if we right now we have enterprise drives in here, but we could use like WD Greenline drives, very low power, and would come up and still power down your drives, you'd be able to disconnect, you'd be able to turn shut them off. A lot of nice features that comes in there. And lastly, file recovery is optional too with this because it treats things as Unix files and not as actual RAID volumes. So you can do data recovery on a drive if you lose it because you're just trying to recover the file on that particular drive. And you can recover a few drives and you can recover a percentage of your data. So let's take a look here at our um, Linux-based Lime Tech boot. So we can see here that you have all the devices hooked up, and you can see where the different drives are there. One thing you have to notice that it's set up to do DHCP, so we actually have to do like a um, IF config to uh, initialize the ETH0 inter interface to a fixed IP in this particular config. But now we have a um, IP set right now of .107. So we have a web server running up right now, I'm booted at 107. We see here that we're at 499 watts, so we've got 500 watts when we're booted and active. Okay? And now let's switch on over to the web browser to see what this array is looking like as an X. So we log in here to the IP address of the RIP disk array right here. And it brings up the web browser for the unraid OS. We can create different, we go to the main page right now, and that brings up all the different drives that we have. We have parity drives here, we have disk drives 1, disk 316, and we have a cache drive too as well. So if we wanted to, we could assign the drive right here to a cache drive. Cache drive is a, it's a flush or write cache. Um, it's very efficient in this operating system. You only need one dedicated parity drive, so it actually produces a lot. You also see down here in the bottom you have your uh, flash boot drive. 
It's different array status. You can start. We'll bring the array online right now. And we're going to come up and put it up. We can then go and see that some drives are formatted and unformatted in the array. Uh, we can do checks and parity checks and do a parity check in the background. We can also do statistics, spin down drives, spin up drives, a lot of great power saving options. So let's come on over here to uh, users. We can set different user accounts with different write privileges. Uh, settings, you see here that you have Apple OS, NFS for any form of Linux or Unix, and then you have Samba as well. This is a window box we're running right now. We're going to be able to mount it up there. So we can see that it's not song was enabled, so we're going to be able to talk to different things. Um, different little uh, system log and other type of stuff, too, if you want to do different things like that. Um, nice little NAS, simple to use. It. Disk settings as well, and network settings, so you have control panels if you want to go configure, configure things. Uh, right now, again, we have it set for a hard IP address. Uh, right there, 107. So let's go out here in the windows and let's just see the disk array. So we come in here to the mount, and then we'll just quick, quickly put in here uh, the IP address, which is already in there, 107, comes up here. So we have here the different mounted disks we can do, and we can also view the flash drive too to update any of the unraid files if we want. We're currently logged in as root, so we have write permissions to everything here. Very simple little uh, OS, you can see how few files it has with the configuration directory, all back up. So that's here, the 107 drive that we can mount. We can go back in over here to our RAID array, containing the main, and then we can configure and add different drives to that. Right now we only have a couple drives in there. We can format more, add more in. Currently on RAID will support up to um, 26 drives because it only supports SDA through SDZ. The new version of the release is coming out this year will support more drives than that. But it will support any drive because it's just completely block mountable. So if you want to put in right here four terabyte drives that are green line, you can. And you can still have an unlimited capacity out on your other side. Currently the system is built with one terabyte drives for demo and test with our controllers we're using. So I hope you enjoyed our quick tour of our blue box system right now. We powered and halted down our system, we copied our data off, we just unplug our keys, put our doors back on, lock them down. We even have an external box for our customer too, to pack it up with a little bit more foam. We slap the shipping label on it, you can either check this in as airport luggage and be going wherever you need to, or you can take this whole thing and back to the office from your data center and back with all of your data running di differently. If you have any needs for a different type of portable storage, we have storage anywhere from the full rack here that will hold up to 256 drives and power itself up on two 208 volt circuits. This is the most drives you can fire on 208 volt circuits down to a single rack system, any type of portability you need. We're your answer for mass storage. Just give us a call at 877 Unix123, or you can reach us online at unixsurplus.com. Thanks for watching our video.